Hello. Today we'll be recapping the 2022 movie Duel, a satirical science fiction thriller. We open with a man on a football field and cameras focused on him. There's a barrier in the middle and a table of weapons behind him. Lights come on and the barrier is dropped and he is instantly shot at. He is shot in the chest but manages to run to his attacker, stabbing him. The match ends and he is interviewed as the winner and a lady asks if he's the double or original. He says double and we learn he is a clone and he just killed the actual person he was created from. We then meet Sarah, a depressed alcoholic with a very dry and robotic personality. She's in a strained relationship with her boyfriend Peter and is facing a disconnect with her pestering mother. One night she has a terrifying dream about her mother and she awakes to find a large amount of blood covering her bed. She showers, cleans the sheets, then heads to the emergency room to get checked out. She tells the receptionist it is not an emergency but suddenly throws up blood so she's taken back for testing. She stays overnight and facetimes her boyfriend who doesn't seem to care about her situation. The next morning a doctor tells her they are waiting for the test results, but whatever is inside of her is very serious. She tells her she needs to go home and rest and definitely not drink, but that night she is seen with a bottle of beer as her relationship continues to decline. The next day she wakes up feeling energized and goes to the gym. She calls Peter saying she has never felt this good and she must have just had a cold. He breaks the shocking news to her that she actually has a terminal condition. Sarah put his number down as the primary contact instead of emergency, which is why he received the message. She is shocked and angry that Peter told her over video chat, but she does not cry. Back at the doctor's office, Sarah learns she has a rare, incurable disease inside her stomach and it'll spread to the rest of her body. It will be completely painless, but there is a 98% chance it will kill her. The doctor does not know when, but says it's only a matter of time and she should begin deciding what funeral she wants. Finally, the doctor tells Sarah she should consider replacement to help her family grieve and she hands her a pamphlet. Back at the house, Sarah watches some videos describing the clone and the process. We learn the clones are a direct copy of the original human and they act as sponges soaking up all the information they can. The more time spent together, the more the clones become you, and it may help the families overcome the loss. Sarah closes the video and schedules a consultation. At the replacement center, Sarah has to show copies of her charts to prove she is dying. In the meeting, she says there is no way she can afford this. However, there is a payment plan where once Sarah dies, her replacement takes over paying the bill as if it were hers. Sarah agrees to move forward and spits into a tube. One hour later, the replacement is finished and the two meet each other. They shake hands and the worker tells the replacement that Sarah is her original. For now, she'll go by Sarah's double, but once Sarah dies, she will take over the name. He also says there was an error, and the double was formed with a different eye color than Sarah. The two drive home together, and the replacement begins questioning Sarah, learning more about her. We learn Sarah's dad passed away a few years ago, and Peter is away right now for work. The double promises to love Peter and Sarah's mother just as much as her, or even more. Sarah gives the double some clothes, but they are too loose on her, and we see the double is much thinner than Sarah. The double tells Sarah to take her shopping and that she wants a different clothing style, which worries Sarah. We fast forward 10 months and Sarah quietly watches as the double and Peter kiss and exchange compliments. It seems the double has grown closer to Sarah's boyfriend than she had ever been herself. The double tells Sarah that she and Peter are going on a date and they don't hide their relationship. The double also asks Sarah for an update on when she is going to die. Sarah tells her she has an appointment tomorrow. At the appointment, Sarah receives shocking news that she has gone into complete remission and is not dying. The doctor says her family will be thrilled, but Sarah Sarah says she never even told her mom because the double was going to take over without her knowing. The doctor then says she should visit the facility to have the double decommissioned and she is no longer allowed to have it. Sarah heads to her mother's house and walks in to find Peter and her double sitting with her. She is angry that the double met her mother, but the mother does not know which is her actual daughter. Sarah explains that she got the double as a gift for her mother when she was dying, but breaks the news that she is no longer sick. Sarah screams at her double and tells her she is going to be decommissioned. Outside, Sarah tries to kiss Peter, but he refuses and says he's with the double. Peter says he doesn't love her anymore and he's done with her. He walks back into the mother's house and locks Sarah out. Sarah yells that she hopes the decommission is painful and drives away. Later, Sarah receives a call from a lawyer who is representing her double. She says the double has filed the motion to stay and Sarah questions her but she hangs up. Sarah consults her own lawyer and he explains she is restricted from contacting her double but has to assist her with payments. She also has to move out of her house as the lease is in Peter's name, not hers. Finally, he reveals the duel to the death will be exactly one year from now. Sarah is confused and the lawyer explains it's to determine who will live the rest of Sarah's life as there can't be two of her. He is surprised she is unaware of this and says the fights are popular on television. Sarah moves out of her house and signs up with a cheap personal combat trainer named Trent. She begins to train every day and starts watching slasher movies to learn how to tolerate seeing violence. Trent teaches her how to fight someone who looks just like her and explains the details of the duel. The two will stand on a field opposite of each other and a cover will be removed from a table. 
table. Both opponents will have 10 seconds to choose their first weapon from an option of 5, and they won't know what the other chose. He explains the strategies of each weapon, and says there's a sixth weapon, her body. Months pass and Sarah continues to train and attends dance classes to stay fit. Her and Trent work on combat strategies and do pretend duels together, and she watches past matches. The night before the duel, Sarah spends the rest of her money on an outfit to potentially die in, but the match gets delayed one month due to rain. Sarah meets up with Peter, and he apologizes for how things ended. She says she understands, but tells him she's going to kill the double and she won't be sorry. Back at the gym, Sarah is out of money, so she pays Trent in the form of amateur dance lessons. He says he's been wanting to take lessons for years, but has been too nervous to start. After the lessons, they talk about the upcoming duel. Trent tells her to look at the extra month as an opportunity to train more. He introduces her to his dog, Connor, and she says he looks very friendly. Trent tells her to grab a bow from a wall, and she does. He then bluntly tells her, shoot my dog. She is shocked and asks why, and he says the dog is very old and suffering. After some hesitation, Sarah refuses, and Trent is disappointed in what he calls her killer instincts, which matches much of the movie's satirical theme. Sarah then looks out the window and sees her double spying on them from across the road and fires the bow. She misses, but runs after her. Sarah finds her hiding in the playground, and the double eventually lets her in. Sarah accuses her of stealing her life, and the double says she understands, but her life matters too. They bond over boyfriend problems, and Sarah says she'll make the death less painful than initially planned. Sarah's double takes Sarah to a support group for people who survive their duels. Inside, the double states she accepts the blame for their fight, but the real enemy is the system forcing them to fight. Sarah agrees, and the two bond and decide to try to escape past the border to live their lives. The next morning, the two hike into the woods, and Sarah soon realizes it was all fake and the double is poisoned or water. We don't see what happens after, but they likely fight. That night, one of them arrives late to the duel after crashing the car and says she is the original. She makes up a fake story, saying her opponent probably won't arrive because she hasn't been training and is likely trying to flee. The duel is called off and the authorities search for what they think is the missing double. In court, Sarah's mother and Peter lie under oath, saying the woman there with them is truly the original Sarah, as they think their plan to replace Sarah is working. Later, we see the one claiming to be the original Sarah begin to have more problems with Peter and decline in health. What we don't know is who survived in the woods. The double may have won and succeeded in their plan with Peter and the mother to replace the original Sarah, but Sarah may have really won and is pretending to be the clone to be more accepted and loved by her family. The movie ends as the surviving Sarah drives off, crying in the car. She may be crying from the burden of replacing Sarah, but never being able to actually be her. Or, she may be crying because she realized her family truly wanted her dead.